All right, so we're going to get into part two here. Um, what part two is going to consist of is laying out the mortise to go through the axe head, which is fairly simple. And uh, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to do a little grinding on the bottom of this axe head. And I'm going to show you why. So I'm going to do that with, uh, get a trouble set up with a carbide bit in it. Uh, let's do that first and then we'll go over laying out the mortise uh, and then we'll get to cutting it and maybe we'll do some draw knives or you know that part gets into stock removal and how you can most efficiently do it whether you're going to do it with chisels or whether you're going to do it with draw knives or whether you're going to do it with spoke shaves or a grinder or whatever that is, or a belt sander, or upright belt sander like I have sitting here, you can do it with that. Um, and that's going to be kind of based on what you have at your disposal. However, I want to do some work on the bottom of this axe head. I'm going to get you over here. I'm going to zoom you in a little bit, show you what's important. And um, then I'm going to grind it out really quick. This isn't going to take very long. I just got a uh, new variable speed um, foot pedal so I want to actually try it out so uh, this is the top of the axe head and this is the bottom of the mortise now what I've discovered is that this is I don't think this was tapered on purpose it, it looks fairly straight shot through it's just poorly done and uh, if I could get you zoomed in let's see if I can like this, yeah. Um, they made an attempt at chamfering it. They didn't do a very good job. It's um, got bumps and bruises inside. The top is better, of course, figures, because, you know, that's what you're going to see. If you can see all the junk down inside there, it's just going to make it simpler if we can clean it up. Plus... With this edge, let me grab a pencil really quick so I can use it as a pointer. Where this edge right here is going to come in contact with the shoulder of the axe. Uh, where's my chunk of wood? Right here. So if you see the old, here's the old axe head that came out uh, the old axe handle that came out of it and if you see where that seats down on the shoulder there um, this is a little bit excessive however where that seats down on the axe um, you don't want a sharp edge here because what that will do is it will almost cause like a cold joint it will cut into the wood and it'll cause the wood to break so this needs to be um, <coughs> tapered and rounded out. Now you can see they made an effort at it. They just didn't do a very good job. So I'm going to clean that up a little bit. And uh, there's a couple of imperfections inside. I don't know if I can show you. There's one over here on this wall. There's my pencil. Already off to a great start. Yeah, I mean, just, this is just is not going to go wicked fast. So there's a pretty good bump right here. I don't want to just kind of maybe smooth out a little bit. And anything else that looks really, really rough, which is a lot of it in here, you can see down there, right there. It's pretty rough right there. I want to smooth that out. Just so that when this thing starts to go on, uh, it's going to uh, go on smoothly and not cause any problems. So what we're going to do is we're going to taper this out a little bit. I'll get you zoomed back out. And uh, get you back a little bit. It kind of looks weird, like you got some sort of like weird parabolic view right now. I might have to fix that. Um, yeah, it's definitely some sort of parabolic view. 
I don't see that in the settings right now. I can't fix it right now. But let's uh, I'm gonna grind this out a little bit here. Get my foot pedal over so I can use my right foot, I guess. It's a new foot pedal, so I'm just gonna have to kind of get used to it here. Handheld here. Let's try it out. Let's see how she runs. second I just want to feel and feel if it's a nice smooth transition it went pretty quick so I'm cutting with carbide yeah it's one little bump right here so I want to fix that make it a little more symmetrical there chamfer's nice now it's not going to cut your finger one little chunk right here on fix Make sure that this thing's not oh.
nothing you're doing here is cosmetic because this is going to be seated. You won't see this. adjustment on that thing so I'll just show you what I did so what I did was I made it symmetrical and I added I'll zoom you in I put a nice chamfer all the way around come on focus And made it very, very symmetrical overall. If I had to be critical myself, maybe this one corner could be wallowed out a little bit more. Let's see if I feel anything in there. Just, uh, it's, you know what it is? It's just because of the chamfer. It's, it's pretty symmetrical inside. It's the chamfer that's got a funny shape to it. But, all right, so that part's done. Doesn't grab your finger. Uh, the important part is that that this is a, a smooth transition to the inside, which it is all the way around. Sometimes right here in this corner it can get pretty sharp, and it's not. So let me get my Dremel out of the way. Get my carbide bits out of the way. And let's go over to laying out this uh, this mortise here. Zoom you back in. So you can see the mortise, you won't be able to see me. So what I did was I pulled myself my center line from the side. It's not this isn't set for it right now, it's set for the center line this way. But I pulled my center line from the side across the top right here. Then I measured this. Now it's not perfectly square, so I did check it, and this corner here is square. So this and this become my reference side. Um, and I pulled the center down from each edge this way uh, and then this way averaged them out whatever the arrow was in the middle to draw my center line there I then took my overall length of the big side Scribe those marks on using this edge as my reference edge here and here and then I took my width and I drew a line off this edge here and here so this 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 become my drop dead as wide and as long this way as I can go um, then I went ahead and dropped my accent on top and I can line up my center lines inside hold it down and scribe myself an oval inside or outside and 
one thing I can see is that this oval a little bit. Oh, it's not all the way over. I should have a headlight on. And get it all the way over here. So that's in my center there. Just grab a light really quick if I have one right here. Let me pause you for one second. I gotta grab a light so I can get it centered up. I actually got a cool little light on for Christmas that goes on my hat. I could have been using that. So I gotta get this backside tapped over a little bit. Let's get a little backwards. That's pretty close there. It's pretty close right there. So here's my basic profile now. Something you like this. Here's my basic profile right now to get this thing inside this axe. So what I need to do is I need to remove all the material out here down to the shoulder or just slightly above right where the shoulder tapers I'm just gonna flip it sideways Ooh. so this is going to sit down and come in contact with where it tapers up here if you yeah where it tapers up there and if you look at the axe handle itself so where that taper tapers up is where the axe is going to bottom out. So I'm going to zoom you out. Put this back in here for a second. Zoom you out. And we can do one of a couple of different things here. So we can do one of, like I was saying before, one of a few things here. We can carve this out with a draw knife. There's quite a bit of material left to pull off there. Or we can go back to the bandsaw and we can make a couple of cuts. And then take them off from the side. And that will get us closer. Um, I think I would opt for the bandsaw if I'm going for speed. Uh, what are you guys going to have? You're going to have chisels. Um, you'll probably have saws. You could cut it with a saw. Cut these lines. You could even cut sideways if you wanted to. You could probably knock the corners off it. You probably want to draw a whole bunch of lines, draw them down. You could rip down with a handsaw. Um, you could just grind it to that shape with a grinder, with, like I said, with a sanding disc on it. That would be a um, reasonable option. 
But the thing here is, if we make these cuts square and straight to start, this accent is going to sit on here straight to the handle. So, so that's the most important part. So if you do, let's just say, we pick it up like this, and we have, I already have my drop dead lines on here, but let's just say that we come over to just outside that line, the oval, just outside the oval. Because we want it, we, when we go to fitting this, we want it to, I've already checked the top is square. Um, we want it to fit. You do this with no you're not gonna have this you want it to fit tight so sorry I'm trying to do this so you can see um, so when you go to fit the accent you have to sneak up on you have to sneak up on the dimension you want it to be too tight and you go in it'll create some shiny spots and then as you create the shiny spots <coughs> You take them off and you go in again, you keep going, you keep going, you keep going until it goes all the way through. So all this stuff that's in the way right now can come off. You can take off the, these cheeks. take these cheeks off and we can also take off you just want to stay just outside just barely outside the oval as close as we can get to it Anybody can do this, all right? You don't need special tools to take off these chunks, which is why I'm doing this. You can do it, like I said, you can do it with a handsaw or a silky. You can even do it, you know, and in all honesty, you could probably do some of it with a chainsaw if you wanted to. Just get just outside the oval. Hello. Okay. Want this just to be slightly very 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 slightly big so almost so our first try it doesn't go in I'm gonna scrap them on every side and then we could actually make a line a drop dead line on the bottom which is going to end up being really the, the initial height of our axe head. Because when we're done, the axe head's going to poke through. So I don't know if you can see that right now, um, this chunk right here is the same height as the axe head, which is what you want. And when this, this will end up going down to where probably that much of it's sticking out. So... What I've done, I hate doing, 
what I've done is I've gone just outside the oval on both sides, dropped those lines down, just outside the oval on these two sides and dropped those lines down. So the fastest thing that you could do right now is go out to the bandsaw or cut them by hand and cut those lines, all four of them, one, two, three, four, all the way down to the height of your axe head. So let's make some marks at the height of our axe head. You can keep watching from there. Or I can kick the camera in. So our height of our axe head is... You can use the axe head if you want. Actually, we might as well keep putting the top up. you got to get used to putting the top up. So let's do it on the side here. And we'll do it on the side of the hall, just so that we have a reference. This isn't critical at all, because it's going to go further than this. So now we have a line on the side, the height of the accent on both sides. You can see the one there. And we could go out to the bandsaw and cut these. And let's just say that I want to, I can go ahead and run these around. Just so I have a stopping point for when I cut them with the bandsaw. No matter which way I'm looking, I don't know which way I'll be looking when I do it. Got one there. Kind of here, and like I said, these aren't critical as long as you don't go too far past them. These aren't critical, these will get tapered in. So, I'm gonna pause you, and we can go out keeping in mind that this right here, this corner, these are our two square sides. So if I put a little mark here, I want to cut with this face down or that face down. That gives me square cuts. Oh, shit, you probably didn't see that. So what I did was we can cut these lines right here down to that depth. It's four cuts. But this is my square corner. So this face or this face, when I make these cuts, has to be down. So this will be on the bandsaw bed. And I'll make the top two cuts. These top two cuts. And then this will go down in the bandsaw bed. And I'll make these two cuts. Now, and I'll cut them as straight as I can without using a guide. That will keep this mortise, uh, this, this tenon, that will keep this tenon square to the blank to start. So we will then all we'll have to remove is this little corner here and this little corner here. If I, well, I'm not gonna mess it up and blew it up, but as you can see, the only you'll only have to remove that little piece there, that little piece there, this little sliver right here on both sides down to the oval shape because everything else will be gone. So I'm going to pause you and we'll go out to the shop. All right, so I just went ahead and cut them off camera. I'm going to zoom you back out. There's no sense in taking you out in the shop to see those get cut. I am just going to um, very quickly cut them off. Two of them came right off the sides, and I'm going to just take these off really quick. Now, the only critical part here is that you don't make sure I'll check the camera view in one second.
Oh, you can see. You don't want to go too deep on this cup right here. Take these cheeks off. It's kind of like right there in this part. It's not super critical right here. This thing's going to get shaped. All I want to do is take off this ear without going too deep. You don't want to go too deep because if you cut into anything on your tenon, it's going to end up breaking. So you can see where I cut outside my oval on all four sides. You don't want to go into that oval with any cuts. I want to make, stay one piece of wood. Everything else is going to get, as the English say, fettled. This is good practice for good practice for cutting tenons. Alright, now we have our basic shape. You can see how much material we removed. So now all we have to do is shave down the corners to get this thing to fit inside the axe. So let's do some of that. I'm gonna try and shoot as much of Part two as I can here before I gotta go eat. And maybe this is gonna be a good view here. Now whether you have a draw knife or if you don't have a draw knife, let me just see what I have. I just let some of mine out, so let's hope that these are sharp. If they're not, I have a new one. Let's try one. If you don't have a draw knife, you can do this with a regular chisel. It's not really a problem. I'm going to do this standing up. I'm try and stay out of your way as much as I can. Yeah, you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start coming down mostly on the outside because like I said we want to fit it this way so we're not we don't want to take off too much down here I just kind of work our way down towards the line here I love trying to put hardwood in place this drone knife is not super sharp I'm going to have to sharpen it some of this other stuff out of the way. If you'll notice I'm um, using this draw knife beveled down. I would suggest that you get good at doing that if you like to use draw knives. It allows you to really regulate the amount of cut instead of it digging in. I did a good number on this people that used it. As we get close, we're going to work on another side. I'm going to get my stool out of the way so you guys can see what I'm doing. Zoom you in. I'm going to 
try and work around so I can, yeah, I'll try to stay out of your way. Can you see the end? Yeah. Some grain directions you'll find work really good and some don't. Mm. I'm trying to find sharp spots of this draw knife because, like I said, I lent it out to some guys to do a job and they brought it back to me and it's not super sharp right now. So, I will have to sharpen later. But let's see if we can get this started. Now, you could do the whole axe, right, just like this. This is how, back in the olden days, and even if you watch somebody that's, you know, really good at it, like, Buck and Billy Ray used to do them. You can do the whole axe all the way down the handle like this. This doesn't, this isn't just for fitting this tenon. You just want to be controlled and you want to start big. So if anything, you don't want it to fit the first time. I'm gonna try and knock this corner off right here without getting in your way. You can see I'm pretty close to my profile right now. We'll flip it over. Get you a different view for a sec. You could do this with a chisel. Um, just with a chisel, you have to be very, very careful with grain direction or you're going to split it. Draw nice a little bit more controlled. Okay, you can see it there. So take this corner off. And what I want to do in this part two now, since Kate just came home, is at least get it in the accent. Please start it. And you can see how far away from the line I am. I'm gonna kind of try and sneak up on it. I'm gonna assume that's not gonna fit the first time. Just keep taking the facets off. And I am going to have to start taking these corners off down here too as I go when as it goes down the axe head because I won't be able to I won't be able to um seed it far enough so to get it seeded all the way to be able to cut down into these corners i'm gonna have to take these corners off too we'll do that in a minute i just want to get the thing started so i'm still a little thick right here side and do the last corner and we'll see how close we are here. Okay, I think I can work around you there. Yeah. You want this tapered. You don't want to take too much off down the other end. Because once it starts to go on, all you're going to do is you should be chasing shiny spots. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Okay, I'm pretty close to profile most of the way. A little bit to do here. It's hard to work around the camera like this, but I think I can manage.
Getting pretty close. All right, so I guess I see one little spot right here. Let's see if the axe will start. I'm gonna back you up a little bit. Let's see if the axe head's gonna start. Make sure that your top's marked and you always use your top. All right, so right now it's not starting. The, uh, it's fat this way. I'm going to move you over this way a little bit, see if I can hog this out really quick. You can still see that I'm not on my line, that I'm off my line on that side, I hope. Let it focus. It's not focusing. So you can still, you can kind of see on this side right here that I'm not to my line and that's where I'm fat. I'm going to whittle that down a little bit. I'm going to back you up just so. Back you out so you can see what I'm doing. If I wasn't videoing, this would be going way faster. Because to be honest with you, I'll be probably grinding it. So let's get, get, get it's just not sharp enough. Shoot, I want a tight fit. I'm going to kind of get in the way for a second because I just want to work on this corner here. can chamfer this edge too to help it start. Okay. I'm still too fat on the sides. The ends look good. I'm still fat here. Right here. I'm going to take work on that real quick. shouldn't have to go past the line uh, I shouldn't have to all I should I should just shouldn't see wood outside the line after I sharpen these draw knives up this is this will go much faster how much too wide am I there it's too wide right here you up so you're not looking yeah, right in your way. Let's get you over here. That's better.
And like I said, once it starts, once it goes on, and you knock these out of the way, this, this goes pretty quick. This is only going slow right now because I'm videoing and because this draw knife is pretty dull. You, so put your back over here. You can still see I'm just a little fat right here, I think. So it looks good, top and bottom, it's still just a little fat in here. Let me grab my new draw knife. Let's show you over here for a second. I'll grab my new one, see how sharp my new one is. This one got given to me as a gift. Let's try this one and see how this one works. So I can see just barely off the line there and there. This one I've never sharpened. This is just the way it came. Oh, this one's just really unpleasant to use. Drama, not as good as mine. I'm going to work the other side really quick. Just I'm, you're going to be behind me. I apologize. shoot this doesn't have to look pretty because it's going to be inside the accent just has to fit tight the tighter you get the fit the longer this is going to last still too fat right here there so it goes working to the outside line a little bit I think I'm all the way to the inside line now It's going to hold me off. One thing you can see is getting it started like this with it still square uh, definitely helps from a holding standpoint. Um... 
almost gone. Still just a little thick right there. give you a look at that oval too in a second see how it's coming out just drawn I've in a pattern Where's my light? Let's see if I can get a good view. It feels like it's just about to start. Just want to get a good view of where I'm at. I think it would just about start right now. I can tell you one thing. I did a bad, and, and this is going to, be critical going forward. I did a bad job. Oh, that's the top. That's why. I did a bad job on... Uh, oh, no. It's perfect on the bottom. The taper changes here. It's perfect on the bottom. Can't see where... Still a little bit tight. I can see the marks now where, it, where the axe I was leaving on the on the head here. The little black marks. It was just starting to slip on. And what we do is we take those black marks off. So if you come around this side, if I zoom you in, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. You see these black, you see those black marks around the top? Oh, if I get my finger in the frame. These black marks right here and right here. These are where it was starting to slide on, and there's some around the top too. The top's a little tight. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take those black, this, this is going to become the pattern going forward. We're gonna take the black marks off. And what's gonna happen is these black marks are gonna move down. 
and it's going to go further and further and further. One more black mark right there. And it's going to go further and further and further, and the black marks are going to move down. You keep taking the black marks off until this is sticking out. Let's see if we go on now. It's just still tight. Oh, I see it right here. I missed that one. Still tight up top right here. I'm going to take this old corner right off. And as you take those black marks off, eventually, it's going to slide right down. And you're going to, what you're going to be doing is you don't beat it down from the front like I'm doing right now. You tap on the other end. So once I get it started, I'll show you that. I want to keep you on until I get to that point. And then we'll end this and do a part three. Make sure there's no more black marks. Once this starts... I'll show you the right way to seat an axe. And it's not hitting it from this end. It's hitting it from the other end while the axe head is on. I see there's some right here that I missed. It's a nice shape. Once you get this thing to sit on here, you're going to start hitting it on the other end. It's starting to go. It's starting to go. We'll do one more round on the black marks so I get it seated enough to start it. Hopefully you can still see them. Yep, you can see the black marks there. The ones on the top up here seem like the most problematic. Looks like it's... I'm going to zoom you back out. Zoom you out. Oh, I zoom out. No, that's in. One second. One second. Zoom you back out. Move over here. I want to get this thing on before I stop this. So, you see this all black mark here where it was going down. careful grain direction because this up here this is going to want to tear out really bad and then there's a couple on the other side and this is going to go further now right there at the top you can see those black marks we're going to take them off next time that you guys come on to see part three i'm going to have a sharp draw knife let's see if i can use this end nope somebody used that up that's wicked doll. All right, I think this is going to go on far enough for us to start working. at least to show you how you seat an axe.
Okay, I'm gonna show you how to seat an axe right now. So we have it started. And this is the most important thing about knowing how to do an axe is knowing how to do this. Obviously this has a long way to go, but we're on, it's starting to feed, and now we can start working black marks. But when you seed it, you hit it on this end, right here. Doesn't matter what you use. You can use a sledgehammer if you want to, it doesn't matter. Um, that is how you are going to get this moving up this. You can use your regular hammer if you want to. And what it's going to do is it's going to start to slowly move up. Right now, I don't know if you can see how far inside it is. Um... Probably not good light. Yeah. You can see where it is right now. It's starting to move up. And then what we have to do is we have to take it off. something to punch it out of here you're gonna punch it out I wonder if I can just tap it off with my wooden mallet it's not very far on right now you need a piece of wood or something to punch this back out when you as you move down Now you can see how far on it went and what your job is to keep working down, take the black marks off, keep working your way down, punch it back on, keep doing the same thing. It will go and go and go until you're all the way seated down here, until this is coming out the top. But you can see I still have to work this area first, but that is how... You fit an axe and fit it tight. You want to keep taking these off. You can do it with a sander too. Just You can see we've got a lot of draw knifing to do. We're still thick down here. Um, we're still high here. Um, so this whole shoulder that it just created has got to come off. You can do it with a grinder or sander or whatever, but you want to keep working it nice and even as you go down. So I will end up sharpening up. And uh, this is where we're at. This thing will go back on. Give it a couple of taps. Once you do that, if you hit it on this end, it'll suck it right back up to where it was. And we want to just keep doing that until we come down and get seated. Now, right now, it looks a little bit crooked, but that's just because it's not fitting great. And all, a bunch of material has to come off. Maybe we'll do a little bit with a grinder uh, in the next one so we can see how fast it goes. But, uh, you know, with a, with an angle grinder with a sanding disc, this will go really, 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 really fast. You, you can wipe this thing and put it on in, in a couple of minutes. So that's where we are. Uh, and the next video we will... Uh, I'll have sharp draw knives, probably even a grinder, and we will get it to go all the way. And once you get done with most of your work, once you get done with most of your work here and you get this thing at least flush with the top of that axe head, then you can go to work on the rest of it because right now you need this squareness to be to hold on to it. It's it's absolutely the best. We'll work this area with the grinder to round it off down into the seat so there's no cold joint here. We don't want any sharp edges. So if you see there's still sharp edges here, 
um, these sharp edges are all going to go away. They're going to get rounded in. And that axe head is going to sit up in here. So we're going to round these so there's no sharp edges, so that all this is rounded. And then with the grinder, you can just grind that black off, grind a little bit down here, grind a little bit around the back, grind a little bit here, take the black marks off, grind that shoulder off, beat it on again, take it off, do the same thing, keep going until you're all the way down. And that's a perfectly fitted axe. Nice and tight. Look at the contact pattern around it right now. That's what you want. You want this nice contact pattern where it's hitting all the way around. If you see a spot where it's not hitting, like right in front of my thumb right there, you're not going to touch that. All you're going to touch is the black spots, and that's where it's rubbing on the way down, and the high spots, and then just keep working. So that's going to do it for this one. <coughs> right now we're at the point where we're seating it, and we will end up cutting a a groove through it for a wedge and then after we'll do that at the end after it's all the way seated to probably here okay once it's seated all the way to there and that and this tenon is flush with the top of the axe we'll cut the groove do our final shaping here and then we can go ahead and hammer this thing home and beat a wedge in it and this part's done we'll probably do that part last after we shape the rest of it. But once we, we will get it all the way flush before we shape this handle. We will shape in this part where the axe is gonna seat, but the rest of it is gonna get finished after the axe head will go all the way to at least flush. Because it will go past flush on its final seating. Perfect. You guys, I'll see you in part three.